In this session, I'm going to start with a new chapter, Strategies for Enhancement in Food Production. Now, what is this chapter all about and why we have this chapter in our textbooks and why we need to study it? Of course, this is a, a big uh, question for many students. Anyway, in the chapter Reproductive Health, I, we have come across with uh, uh, dealing huge populations and we used family planning methods to control population. Now, um, there may be advantages of having huge population, but more than that, uh, I will be uh, talking only about disadvantages of uh, having a huge populations. Now, one problem that comes with uh, uh, big populations is shortage of uh, food. Now, with this growing population, we need to produce enough food to supply all uh, to supply all this population now all those uh, techniques and methods which we will be using to increase the food for uh, supplying this population is what we are going to study under this strategies for enhancement in food production now when it comes to right uh, the food what comes into our mind is agriculture. Now, agriculture is a broad term and it has several branches. Okay, now let's see the definition of agriculture. It is practice of rearing domesticated plants and animals for obtaining food and other useful products. So it's a practice of rearing domesticated okay plants and animals for obtaining food and other useful products there are many branches of agriculture i will be mostly concentrating on uh, two main uh, branches like uh, animal husbandry well uh, i will be discussing in detail about this uh, animal husbandry and also one more is uh, plant breeding so to this animal husbandry and plant breeding, we applied principles. Okay, we applied, I mean, say applied biological principles. Right. And when we apply these biological principles, we'll see what those uh, biological principles and so uh, all those in my coming sessions. When we apply these biological principles on animal husbandry, okay, and uh, plant breeding, right, it resulted in increasing in the food production. So this led to increase in the food production. Okay, now uh, these are, uh, you know, the animal husbandry and plant breeding are uh, different uh, techniques that we are using from a very long time. Now we have uh, new technologies. Okay, so new techniques already have come up. So among these uh, new techniques we have is, okay, embryo transfer technology again we'll discuss about what actually is this embryo transfer technology where we will use and how we are going to use it the procedure and all we'll uh, discuss in detail so embryo transfer technology and there is another one called tissue culture which i will be talking almost at the end of this chapter in detail now these are a uh, very recent techniques uh, okay the new techniques and these uh, new techniques 
okay are also going to play a major role in increasing food production okay right of course uh, 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 this is a book that have been written long back and by this time already we have embryo transfer technology and also tissue culture uh, going on okay and this also already has resulted in increasing in the uh, food production here right now we'll see uh, first uh, as i told i'll be talking about this animal husbandry we'll see in detail okay animal husbandry now what is animal husbandry so first we'll see the definition okay so it is agriculture i mean agricultural okay practice of breeding and raising livestock so breeding and raising of livestock okay uh, in simple i can say that it is a care and breeding of livestock care and breeding of livestock right now what actually is this uh, livestock and what are all the things that are included in the livestock now the livestock includes animals like uh, buffaloes like it includes even cows okay pigs it includes uh, horses it includes sheep it includes goats it includes camels okay like all these will be under uh, or with the one term we use uh, the livestock okay uh, these are mainly grown for several reasons for the purpose of meat milk wool and so now there are other okay uh, branches that we will be including even i mean uh, under the livestock okay so what are those other animals that uh, will be included under the livestock including even poultry so this poultry which simply means okay rearing of uh, a rearing of birds again we will see this poultry in detail okay then even we have is of fisheries this fisheries is again a common term let's see so this fisheries includes okay rearing of uh, fishes right and also mollusks so these are called okay shellfishes so rearing of uh, okay shellfishes and uh, even we include something called crustaceans is a group under arthropoda and uh, this uh, crustaceans group includes okay prawns crabs lobsters etc all those are crustaceans and rearing of them okay rearing catching okay and selling whatever uh, whatever all about them uh, we use with uh, one word fisheries now we also include under this animal husbandry the apiculture so which means okay the rearing of honeybees rearing of 
anyways i will be talking in detail about this epic culture okay in my coming sessions then we also have uh, sericulture so that includes rearing of uh, silk worms so even the rearing of uh, honey bee silk worm everything uh, also come under animal husbandry right now uh, the livestock uh, when we compare here uh, of course we know the india and china are the one that have a uh, very huge populations and not only huge populations they also have maximum livestock so that is uh, okay more than 70% of livestock exists in india and uh, china okay now even though uh, the livestock uh, is a uh, very huge here in these two countries but the productivity is very less so here okay productivity is very less and it is around okay 25% the livestock is more than 70% but the productivity is very less so we need to uh, apply okay uh, different uh, techniques and methods to improve these livestock and thereby okay increase uh, the productivity of this livestock now the point here uh, i mean uh, there are uh, uh, different methods which we have uh, used like a selection uh, when you see some buffaloes uh, one buffalo if it gives a very a good yield of milk now we need to consider to uh, one more point the quality the quality of the milk and also the quantity of the milk now the cow which gives okay uh, the good quality of milk and also the quantity of the milk is the one uh, that we like to choose okay and such animals all together can increase the productivity now uh, right what are all those biological principles which we are going to apply okay on uh, animal husbandry and even on plant breeding and uh, that actually uh, helps in increasing the food production one more point okay production per unit is very less so this is the point of concern okay and uh, we will be uh, we need to apply okay certain biological principles and increase the productivity right as that of uh, this uh, livestock so here the conventional animal breeding practices so the conventional animal breeding practices which means uh, age old practices that we are doing okay from very long time and these uh, conventional animal breeding practices are not enough to increase food production okay and we know the world population is at 7.2 billion and among that india itself has 1.2 billion so for this huge population okay to supply food we okay we need new technologies okay that uh, help actually uh, in increasing uh, food production so the conventional whatever the conventional animal breeding techniques or practices what we are doing are not enough to increase the food production here okay and for this purpose we need to apply we need to apply okay newer techniques we need to apply newer techniques okay and this will actually help in enhancing the uh, food production so right so you can use this to achieve improvement 
in okay quality and also quantity of food production okay so we require both the quality as well as uh, quantity okay of the food production so what those uh, new technologies or techniques we'll see them in detail okay and before going into it first i like to discuss about animal husbandry let's see about animal husbandry under that i'm going to talk about uh, okay uh, the dairy farm management right let's say under the animal husbandry as i told okay i'm going to talk about dairy farming uh, let's see the definition it's a scientific method of maintaining okay cows and buffaloes okay and collection and preservation of their milk and the production of uh, milk products like cheese butter and so and so right which will be sold in the market now the scientific dairy farming okay helped in white revolution so it helped in white revolution means uh, this scientific dairy farming uh, right uh, the way we choose the cows and buffaloes uh, which give uh, a good quality and quantity of milk okay uh, in this way uh, it actually helped in increasing in the production of milk and uh, their products and so for that reason so we consider okay uh, it as a white revolution here now okay so in the white revolution so production of milk increased significantly so it increased uh, significantly now uh, let's see uh, about these uh, uh, cows and what kind of uh, cows what kind of buffaloes are uh, important okay in dairy form right and uh, uh, how to maintain okay the dairy form and all we'll see it now right these cows and okay right ox uh, which i call with the word cattle and uh, buffaloes these belong to family okay so we have a classification so they belong to family bovide right and uh, they belong to order artiodactyla and class we know they belong to mammalia right now uh, first we shall say about those uh, okay cattle now the scientific name of this cows or ox is the scientific name is boss indicus is boss indicus and these are okay commonly called it has a common name and the common name is zeb and when coming to buffaloes okay their scientific name is okay bubalus bubalis is the scientific name okay and uh, these are actually they are commonly or common name they are simply called water buffaloes okay so these 
okay uh, cows here of course in the dairy form we don't have any uh, uh, much work of these uh, males okay so ox in fact we know uh, they are males right so in the dairy form it will be only concerned with the, the female okay water buffaloes okay and uh, the cows right now right so these uh, cows and uh, buffaloes they have okay uh, a suspended organ called udder so it's a uh, udder and this one stores milk okay so both uh, cattle as well as buffaloes have this udder now the animals which are actually meant only for production of milk so animals meant for production of milk so these are called milch okay breeds uh, what actually is this breed and everything again this word i will uh, uh, come again uh, and we'll discuss in detail actually what is this breed and how we are going to uh, increase uh, the quality of the breeds okay by a process called breeding we'll see that in the coming sessions now uh, just keep in mind so that animals which are meant only for the production of milk we call them okay uh, right uh, milk breeds or you can also call uh, milk animals okay right now there are uh, if the animals or animals meant for okay carting okay or uh, if they are used in agriculture or in uh, like uh, so used in carting as well as uh, for uh, in agriculture okay processes like a tilling etc so if animals are used in in that way then we have to call such animals as drought breeds so they are called drought breeds now there are certain animals that may be helping for both the purposes animals okay meant for okay agricultural okay works and also production of milk so if it is the case then such animals we have to call them dual purpose breeds okay right so we have milk breeds or milk animals that are meant only for the production means mainly they are used okay in uh, production of milk okay or in the dairy form so these are the one the milk breeds or the animals okay used in okay dairy form so these are the one that are mainly used in dairy form now these uh, animals uh, which are used in agricultural works okay uh, like carting or tilling or any other okay purposes and these are very poor okay in uh, usually they are very poor in giving milk so they are called uh, drought breeds but there are some breeds which will be very much good at uh, okay agricultural works as well as also they are capable of okay producing a good yield of milk then those are called dual purpose breeds so here uh, for reference i have just mentioned okay uh, the definition of the breed uh, a stock of animals or plants within a species having a distinctive appearance so breed whenever i use a word breed is not a different species so breeds are okay the animals with some distinctive features 
and they all whatever the breeds whatever the number of breeds all those will be under one species only okay so a stock of animals or plants within a species okay having some distinctive appearance so by looking at it you can come to know that uh, uh, it's a, a different or a variety under the same species okay and uh, that typically have been developed by deliberate selection so selection is a very old procedure of animal breeding okay so uh, if you find out of uh, some 10 15 okay cows or buffaloes the one which has a uh, very good okay characters like resistant to diseases okay and uh, uh, it feeds very less on food okay and but it gives a very good quality as well as quantity of the milk then those are the animals which are uh, selected so just by looking at its uh, features and so uh, if you select the animals then the process is called selection so it is a very age old okay method of uh, animal breeding not only animal breeding even plant breeding also now these breeds i'm going to okay classify into two different types so they are called okay indian breeds or i also use another word called desi breeds or indigenous breeds okay so indian breeds okay desi breeds or indigenous breeds so when i use this word so the, or whatever those plants or animals they are the one that belong to okay indian origin so of okay indian origin now if they are not of indian origin and they are brought from somewhere else okay outside india then you have to call them as exotic breeds or imported breeds so which means not of indian origin now let's see some examples of okay indian or indigenous breeds of buffalo so i just mentioned here okay they see breeds of okay buffaloes that so we have a uh, okay mura is a indian breed of okay that buffaloes then okay mahasana is an another okay breed of buffalo then surti and then nagapuri etc are some indian breeds of that buffaloes now we'll see desi breeds of cows and coming to desi breeds of cows we have uh, okay red sindhi and uh, okay sahiwal and uh, okay gir etc are some desi breeds of cows for your reference i also mentioned some exotic breeds of cows okay like a uh, holstein friesian which will be uh, which is actually native of uh, holland and jersey this has actually okay brought from jersey into india so now we are actually uh, most of these exotic breeds are present in india okay and even red dane this has brought from uh, denmark and the brown swiss this has brought from uh, switzerland so these are some exotic breeds of cows and here i also have given for your reference some okay drought examples of uh, drought breeds some examples of uh, dairy or milk breeds 
and even some examples of uh, dual purpose braids. So broad braids already we know so they are uh, useful in okay agricultural works so mostly okay they are used in uh, agricultural works okay so here uh, it doesn't mean that when they are uh, used in agricultural works they will be not at all giving milk the point they will be producing milk the females will be producing the milk but the quantity okay of the milk production is very less when compared with this uh, uh, dairy or milk breeds okay now uh, examples of these uh, drought breeds uh, that uh, where uh, most of these uh, breeds will be used in agricultural works okay or for some other purposes then halikar is a cow okay and amrit mahal is a cow that are mostly used in these uh, agricultural works then coming to dairy or milk breeds we have uh, different uh, so many species i mean uh, so many breeds of this uh, sindhi is a cow sahiwal is a cow surti is a buffalo and mahasana okay buffalo and mura is a buffalo almost whatever we have seen they are indigenous uh, indigenous breeds okay uh, which are very good at uh, producing milk and these are the one which are of our important so these are the one which we are going to use in dairy form okay then coming to this dual purpose breeds the dual purpose breeds are the one which will be used for both okay agricultural works plus they are also very good okay milk yielders okay good milk producers okay so here i have given some examples uh, haryana okay a cow ongol is again a cow nagpuri okay depending on the location okay they have they, they, uh, they have given the names okay based on the location from where they have been okay uh, selected so haryana okay uh, ongol they are the names of the cow i, I mean again nagpuri is a buffalo so that are okay good at agricultural works and also uh, good at producing milk we'll see about dairy farm management now let's look at on some points of this dairy farm management so here i have given a definition uh, which is control and scientific handling of farm animals and here are some points which i have mentioned and they are very important uh, okay uh, for uh, this uh, dairy farm now the first point the proper cleaning of the place and shelter for the cows and buffaloes is a must now this actually helps in production of clean milk so it actually helps in production of clean milk and okay uh, the proper cleaning of the shelter also helps in maintaining uh, the cows and buffaloes in good health condition okay so another point here it also helps in maintaining health of animals okay so that's one point so proper cleaning of the place and shelter for cows and buffaloes is must and there must be adequate amount of fresh and clean drinking water that should be supplied all the time and here also okay and also ventilation should be proper so a proper ventilation should be supplied so the movement of air and everything uh, it must be okay uh, given care for that also we have to okay uh, take care uh, so that there is a proper ventilation in the form then the feed is a very important here and uh, feeding it should be carried out in a scientific manner okay so how much quantity 
what will what should be the quality and what are all the ingredients that you need to add in the feed also uh, are of very importance now this feed usually okay it may uh, consists of like uh, legumes millets oil cakes oil seeds grains of cereals and it goes on with uh, a lot of ingredients so with these different compositions we need to feed okay these uh, cows or buffaloes okay and uh, the quality of the milk obviously depends on okay the feed what they take now and also uh, there must be stringent cleanliness of both cattle and uh, handlers so while milking okay uh, uh, like washing the hands and everything and even washing the udder okay there is no uh, bacterial infections or okay any dust and so so cleanliness of both cattle and handlers is must okay while milking then there must be okay regular inspections we have to regularly visit and see uh, how uh, cleanly we are maintaining and any problem or any infections okay any cow with such a case we should uh, separate that okay cow or buffalo from the rest of the herd and so okay and here a regular visit of veterinary doctor is uh, compulsory and it's a uh, mandatory okay compulsory a doctor have to visit on a regular basis and see what is the health condition of uh, these animals then the milk yield is primarily depend on quality of breed okay so what kind of breed you like to choose we have earlier just we have seen uh, different types of breeds and we need to select a different uh, okay uh, a kind a breed that is uh, capable of giving a uh, very good yield of uh, milk okay and we uh, should also see certain other features in these uh, okay uh, dairy farm uh, animals like whether they are capable of resisting diseases or not so the breeds that are very good at resisting diseases are very much important uh, important and uh, we like to choose such breeds into our okay uh, dairy farm here I have given a small comparison between uh, cow's milk and uh, buffalo's milk. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, so these are all the different ingredients, or I mean, uh, different constituents of uh, the milk in okay cow and also in case of uh, buffalo milk. So if you look at the water, so this is a rough idea. Okay, to know uh, right about uh, how, what will be the composition of uh, cow's milk and also the buffalo's milk now when we see here it's a uh, 80 it has 86.8 percent in case of uh, okay cow's milk and 83.5 uh, percent in case of buffalo's milk now if you look at fats okay fats are less 4.6 when compared with the buffalo milk that has 7.1 okay so the milk with lesser fats are much preferable now the lactose content is also okay a slightly less when compared with uh, okay buffalo milk in case of cow's milk it's only 4.7 percent and uh, it's about 4.8 percent in buffalo's milk now protein content is also less 3.2 and uh, in case of buffalo's milk it's uh, 3.7 and when you see a carotene so carotene is a raw material for okay synthesis of uh, vitamin a so it's a very good for eyesight okay so it's present in cow's milk but it's not present in buffalo's milk and because of this presence of carotene the cow's milk may have a light yellow color whereas a buffalo's milk okay is uh, it will be white in color due to absence of that carotene so whatever that uh, here the values which i have mentioned is almost approximately okay and it is only to get an idea and compare uh, the cows as well as buffalo's milk and here milk is deficient of iron copper okay even iodine is also not present in milk and uh, vitamin c etc Okay, so it's a deficient of iron, copper, iodine, uh, vitamin C, 
etc okay so that's uh, and uh, right again i have given an uh, approximate uh, of different uh, substances that are not present in milk